Well, good evening, everyone, and um, welcome to the Northampton Planning Board meeting. This is Thursday, December 9th, 2021. Um, this meeting is being recorded. We have uh, a few items on the agenda, a public hearing, and then some smaller administrative uh, discussions about reviewing some older plans and some a and R's. Um, but before we start the meat of our agenda, um, we traditionally hold a little time for public comment. If there's anyone in the audience who would like to speak about something that's not on the agenda tonight for the planning board, if the item is on the agenda, there will be time for public comment at that point. So is there anyone out there, which is the world of Ellen, John, and Chris, who would like to come forward? All right. Hearing none, then we'll move right into our 7 p.m. public hearing, um, <clears throat> which is a special permit amendment by Tokorura Realty Investments to modify setbacks in the cluster open space project on 49 Ridgeview Road in Florence, map ID 41 through 59. Is there someone here to make a little presentation for us? Um, so, um, I don't, is Chris, is that um, Chris three, is that the applicant? You can unmute. Um, hmm. Hi guys. Hi. Can you hear me now? All right. <laughs> oh, just take me into your kingdom now, God, please. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, um, folks. I am the seven o'clock meeting. Um, thanks for thanks. Thanks for meeting me tonight. So I am very simply just requesting a special permit under the 2015 special permit that was granted back in 15 under cluster developments. I got a real nice house at 49 Ridgeview in Northampton. Take a long story short, it's supposed to be 30 feet off the road. It's 26, quite frankly. Um, I'm the general contractor. Anything that happens on my job site, good or bad, ultimately is my responsibility. It's my responsibility. Very simply, folks, when we laid it out, I made a decision on site to shift the house so that the house had more sun exposure, so that the front door lined up with the neighbor's front door at the street, and so that the driveway was a little bit smaller. I didn't use as much asphalt, and when people came up the street, they didn't see all this siding on the garage. They saw the house. Um, I guess, well... From now on, I'll always call my surveyor when I do any type of movement. I just figured moving it a little bit to the to the left wasn't going to do anything or you know, do any harm. And it did. I'm four feet short. <laughs> and I guarantee I'll never do it again. And I'm sorry it happened. It wasn't it was not done deliberately. Um, so I just want to clarify, I think the surveyor showed a 25 foot measurement at one corner because the house isn't exactly parallel to the street. So um, I think that's right. on the plan. So the request would be for a reduction from 30 foot front, front setback to a 25 foot front setback. Yes, did I say 26? I'm sorry, it is 25. I'm, I'm sorry, it, it is 25. Carolyn, how did this come to our attention or to the applicant's attention? Um, so the, um, the buyer was interested in purchasing and through the due diligence process, I believe it, um, it came about that this, the house was not at the right location. And so um, I believe there's still um, someone who, and so the buyer has, um, you know, sort of, as far as I understand, stopped proceeding until this could be rectified because there's no other mechanism to change that. I mean, luckily, the, I guess the zoning 
was amended a few years ago to um, eliminate the minimum setbacks for uh, in cluster open space um, residential developments. So um, if the zoning had not been changed, there would have been no recourse um, other than a request for a variance, but it doesn't qualify for the request for a variance. So um, that's why they're in front of the planning board because the 30 foot front setback is no longer a current requirement for um, special permit for an open space uh, residential development. George, if I can jump in just to add to that. Um, uh, it came to our, it came to my attention when the buyer of record surveyor came out and said, you're too close to the street. And quite frankly, I'm just going to be honest and say, I, I didn't get it until probably nine days ago. And I finally sat down with my surveyor and he showed it to me on his computer, on his CAD form and said, by doing this, this is what happened. Thank you. Any questions from board members before we turn it over to the public? All right, is there anyone from the public who would like to talk regarding this application? Ellen Barker. Uh, you have to unmute. Am I no. unmuted now? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, the buyer is still extremely interested in buying this house. It's a beautiful little neighborhood and the house is great. It's just, um, yeah, and you know, at the time that the original permit was, was issued for the subdivision back in 2005 before anything was built, the ordinance was different and you know the setbacks and so under current current ordinance there as i understand it there aren't really subdivision setbacks so it complies under current ordinance and that's what we're hoping that that um you know that it will be approved and she'll be able to buy it thank you any other comments from the audience? All right. Well, we'll go back to the planning board. And are there any questions? Seems pretty straightforward. Um, there was a um, a letter from. I, I think one of the requirements was a letter from the homeowners association. Um, saying that the you know they were fine with amending the setback and uh chris bloom the um chris three here has that letter <laughs> in his possession and and um you know evidently the the whole neighborhood is fine with the fact that the house is where it is and they would love to have my buyer become their neighbor the planning board has a copy of that letter now correct Yes, it's in the Thank file. You. It's in the Thank record. You. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Ellen, um, just for our minute, could you um, I just identify where you live, your address? Where I live? Yeah. Uh, I live in West Hampton at 48 Southampton Road. Thank you. In West Hampton, and I work for Delap Real Estate in Northampton. Great. Thanks, Carolyn. I would, yeah, I would just like to clarify for the board. I think, um, you know, there's there are a couple of ways you could do it. You could amend the special permit that's just applicable to this property, or you could amend the special permit to state that all the front setbacks are uniformly modified to a 25 foot minimum. Um, so that, you know, down the road, if somebody wants to put an addition on their house in the front, then they could, you know, if they're not currently at 30 feet, they have more room. So it's up to the board to determine if you just want to narrowly focus it on this property within this cluster or have it applicable throughout. Car Carolyn, under the, there's no requirement for any front setback though, correct? Correct. 
And so if there was a cluster development with the same plan that was filed in 2018, and then someone wanted to put an addition on their front porch, there would be no planning process at all, right? They would just do it. Well, it would probably be a site plan amendment because what you're approving is the project as it's presented with the standard building envelopes. So it kind of depends on how the application comes in and how the board approves it. So would any addition, no matter whether it's over some hypothetical non-existent setback or not, have to come to the planning board under a cluster development? Um, uh, I, again, it's going to depend on how it's initially submitted. If, um, for example, if the applicant were to show 10 foot setbacks all around, you, you would approve it as presented with the building envelopes as such. Um, and then they would build according to that, to those parameters. And so if there was a modification, then it would require an amendment. That's typically how it would happen. There's usually, you know, in whatever you're approving, there's um, the plans that you are in front of you or what you're approving for the light, for um, you know, building envelope, not necessarily the structure, but just the area in which the structure can be built. So under the new cluster development scheme, even though there's no front step back required, the cluster development has to propose, here's the front step back for my cluster development that I'm yeah. implying for this project, that yeah. all of the houses are this, it could be, it doesn't have to be 25, it could be- It could be whatever. It could be six and a half inches or whatever. Right. Okay. Yeah. So to me, it seems like the 25 feet was clearly a happenstance act of uh, the chaos of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, it seems really odd to uh, make that rule apply to everyone. But I guess I don't know if that's time to talk about that now or not. Yeah, I, I agree somewhat. I don't know why we would put 25 feet on this one cluster development if, in fact, somebody could come forward and petition to build to 15 feet or 6 inches. Uh, the subdivision's almost built out, so I don't think it's really going to be an issue here. But um, it, I just wanted you to be clear that you you could uh, determine your decision either way uh, for just this property within the cluster, or have it uniformly applied. Is there any? Um, is there any? Uh mechanism within the homeowners association if anyone wants to put an addition on their house that it gets reviewed by the homeowners association in some way no mm. not if it's within this the original setbacks in the building mm. envelope if it's all within the original approved plan then it just is a building permit but for this particular house i mean you know with with current ordinance, if they built the house, you know, if, you know, the original permit was 2005 and things were different back then. I mean, current ordinance doesn't require a setback. So does that mean, I mean, does that give us any leeway for this particular instance of this particular house on Ridgeview Road? Yes, Alan, it certainly does. We're, we're talking kind of at the precedent, how, how it might really impact others down the road. I see. So okay, one, thank you. Yeah. Um, other people on, other board members, meaning one way or the other, as to have our motion just speak to this one house lot or two grant the uh, release to all of the houses in this subdivision. I would lean towards doing it uniformly. So there isn't just one lot that has, you know, special privileges. I don't, like David was saying, 25 just seems to be a random number that got pulled out of a hat. So, you know, we love to talk about, well, how did we decide on this number versus some other number? But, um, I don't really care what the number is, honestly. I just think it should apply to all lots. Uh, 
Um, so the language might say that it um, <clears throat> we're granting relief in this situation and in uh, all of the lots in this development then will abide by the zoning um, amendments, the zoning changes of 2017, which provides for building up to the, the lot line. Well, what's in front of you is a request for the 25 feet, but the, that can only come before you because currently there's no minimum front setback. So I, your motion really should be to accept the change from a 30 foot front setback for when it was permitted and it would be a permit amendment to go to 25 feet. And it could either be a permit amendment that's applicable only to 49 Ridgeview, or you could say the special permit is amended to alter the front setbacks for all the lots to be 25 feet instead of the 30 feet that was approved at the time. I don't see why we should be limited to those two options, honestly. There's no, there's nothing in the ordinance that provides any front setback. Why couldn't we say there's no front setback for any of these lots? I see what you're saying. Yes, you right. could do that. Right. Yes. So just whatever you decide, make sure you, you're clear on your motion <laughs> so that I can make sure I'm, I'm putting that in the decision. I mean, I don't know. It's hard. There's no clear, like obvious choice. I would just say a, the nature of a cluster development is to have a little bit of density and a lot of open space, right? I mean, that's the sort of philosophy of it. So yep. if you pick, I don't know, I mean, just pick a URA, you know, which is kind of, something like a neighborhood that we're trying to make within an open space, you know, that has a 20 foot setback. I would do something like that, you know. I'm gonna text the application over again and scratch out 25 and put in zero. <laughs> no, I don't think you need to do that. No, no. I'm just teasing, I'm just Sorry. teasing. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure why we would limit this one subdivision to 20 feet. Um, if in fact, future subdivisions can go all the way, there would be no, um, no setbacks at all. So why should we restrict? Well, George, I guess it's tricky. That's why I was asking about the homeowners association because it's not, uh, there are no setbacks required in the cluster development application, but when the site plan is put together, and reviewed by the planning board, like theoretically the planning board would sort of look like, does this make sense, right? And if someone just wanted to say, like build right up to this, to the right of way under this current plan, it might start to feel out of place in some sense. And if there was a homeowners association review of the addition, you know, you could sort of say, well, they'll deal with it. <laughs> they like will vote it down if they don't want it or, or whatever. But uh, under this, if we just go to zero, I mean, I, I guess it's something we could think about. I don't know. I don't know how much of a danger of this happening there is. I mean, it still has to comply with open space requirements and things like that. Carol, well, there is a lot of open space around this particular development. There's lots of conservation land. I don't know that anyone's planning to build an addition or, or whatever, but um, I, I don't think... I think there's there's one flag lot that remains to be built on, but everything else is already there. Thanks, Ellen. If that makes a difference. Right, it's quite unlikely that someone's gonna put a new guest bedroom between their house and the street, right? <laughs> I'm fine with George. Yeah. Carolyn, that was gonna be my question. You said this is mostly built out, but we just heard from um, Ellen that there's at least one lot that isn't built out. That's my only question about just throwing it wide open is that would this then open it up that all of the other houses have a 30 foot setback, this house has 25 and then the final house has zero. If it's a flag lot, that's not, well, I it's, guess it it's would a still flag be an lot. issue, but it's not gonna show up anyway. But Carolyn, can you just talk, is that the only lot that's um, remaining to be developed here? Um, I believe so. And the flag lot standards are different anyway. They're not part of the cluster. So you don't have to worry about that one. Okay. Yeah, everything else is built out. It's a real cute neighborhood, you know, with a lot of landscaping and, and um, you know, this house is gonna be really nice once my buyer gets in there and- Thank you, starts. thank you, Ellen. We appreciate the perspective <laughs> from a realtor. They're all cute neighborhoods. <laughs> okay, um, I'll stop. <laughs> all right. 
uh, who, uh, I'd I, like I to make a motion to close public comment. Okay. I second. Motion seconded. Any discussion on the motion? All right, we have enough information from the applicants and uh, participants. So we have to have a, a roll call vote on the motion to close the public hearing. Melissa. Yes. And uh, Corinne. Yes. Marissa. Yes. Chris. Yes. Krista. Yes. David. Yes. Diana. Yes. Hello, Sam Taylor. Yes. yes. And the chair votes to close public hearing also, so it's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much, folks. No, we just closed the public hearing, Chris. We didn't vote on the uh, application yet. So that's our next vote. Oh. Don't, don't leave us yet. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm, I'm happy just to stick with the language of the application from 30 to 25 feet. We can make that uh, remain to the whole subdivision, which is fine. Um, I'm sure if other people wanted to go beyond that, they could find another way to do it through the ZBA or something else. But if that's good and concise for the subdivision, let's kind of stick to that. Anybody want to try that in language? Yeah, I guess I missed what you said, George. You said you, you like the 20 feet or you like? The 25 feet as proposed in the amendment from 30 to 25. And so that the other residents would have the availability to go to 25 also. Sure, sure I move we uh, change the required front setback to the, the, the minimum front setback to 25 feet in this cluster development. I second. Any discussion? Nope, all right. So the motion has been made and seconded. We'll go to a vote for it again. Uh, Melissa? Yes. And uh, Corinne? Yes. And Marissa? Yes. Chris? Yes. Krista? Yes. David? Yes. Diana? Yes. Sam? I'm gonna stay in. I didn't hear the presentation. Okay, thank you. And the chair will vote yes. So it's seven yes and one abstention. One, two. Eight yeses and one abstention. Well, thank you very much, Ellen, for joining us. And Chris, good luck on your next project. Okay, go. So at this point, we'll, that's our main agenda item. We'll move now to the other administrative things that Carolyn asked for. What would you like to start with, Carolyn? <laughs> um, I guess what's the next one? Big Y, we can do the lighting. We don't have any A&Rs, so it's just going to be the Big Y lighting to close out of Beaverbrook in minutes. So, um, I forwarded you the as-built plans that uh, the Big Y sent. Um, do you want me to put those on the screen or um, are you guys um, all set with that? Basically, there are a couple of hot spots under the canopy that were just over 17 foot candles. You would approve the plans at about 16 foot candles. They also are 4,000 K temperature lights instead of 3,000 but that also may affect the, um, the illumination levels as well. So it was a mistake on their part, um, but they wanted to pitch it to the board to see if you would accept that modification in their as-built, or if not, then of course they would swap out the lamps um, and um, then reevaluate the um, light levels. Can I, 
uh, this is slightly disconnected to, the, to this. Right before I joined the board, I know because it was talked about, there was a, a meeting um, where I think it was connected to Smith about looking at what these light candles mean. And it's a discussion that's always brought up. I, I guess I'd appreciate, I mean, we, we don't have to have all group thing, but if someone could send me to some, some place that I, so I can go and see exactly what, you know, 15 versus 16 means. Um, but the answer, I mean, I guess the answer is, is that they shouldn't, they're a huge company, they shouldn't have screwed up and they need to go back and fix it. But separate from that, I would like to have a better understanding of what that, what that is. Yes, I can try to send you some technical data. I think that it would probably be pretty hard for you to detect one level change between okay. 16 and 17. Um, so, um, I, I mean, you know, like anything, if there's a big jump, then that's where you would, you, your eye could probably detect it. I'm not technically savvy enough to tell you what that is or any more detail about that. But I can, we can also, we're, we're going to be having a more technical detailed discussion about lighting because we have, we have to amend our ordinance and um, we have a draft that's been floating around, but um, uh, I haven't, it's not quite ready to come forward again, but I'm sure we'll be having those technical details um, discussions uh, at that time as well. I mean, I just curious why they didn't accidentally make a mistake and go one lower. Well, actually just to also um, confirm, those lights are on a dimmer. Um, so they can actually tweak it now and bring them lower. The problem with the dimmer, of course, is whoever's in control of the dimmer can ratchet it back up again. No way. So, <laughs> so you know, there is a solution to the light levels, not the temperature control without swapping out the lamp. Um, but those two are also um, a bit related. So you know, there are two, there are two um, areas in which they're not complying to the plan that they presented. And so you, you all should just determine whether or not um, you want them to address that either through dimming or through swapping out the lamps and then coming back with another ad bill. I'd be in favor of them swapping out the lights. I don't think we could ever notice a foot candle or two, but you know, the, the color temperature we will notice. Um, and we did specify 3000. So um, I know it's a bummer, but that would be my vote. I think uh, if you saw 3000 and a 4000, without the other one there, you wouldn't know the difference. And I think car headlights are often far bluer. This, it's, this is, there's embodied energy in the lights that are already there. It's totally wasteful. It doesn't improve anybody's life to swap these out. I think let's leave it, let's move on. I don't know, I don't, I don't understand well, who, what are we making better other than like, we feel like we made a rule and they violated the rule. I mean, to me- Well, I, I will say that uh, I remember this discussion and this was a point of discussion specifically. Uh, and and was was kind of one of the more i mean it wasn't a contentious site plan that i you know discussion that i recall but what what there was to talk about was the lights i mean that being said i do actually think it's well i mean i don't i don't guess that these lights would go unused or couldn't you know be re repurposed or resold um like they couldn't work something out i don't know it we spent some we I mean, spent some time talking about the lights specifically and 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 they do, am I recalling correctly that they wanted one hundred percent we we talked about this right and they asked for it to be higher and we said and we said no and then but clearly they passed that on to someone at 
Zimmermans or whoever they buy their lighting for. And I mean, I guess outside of, I'd like to know why they chose something that didn't comply. It seems I mean, to me from from the spec that's on the on the sheet, it seems like they just chose the wrong the the, the four thousand sorry, the four thousand instead of the three thousand Kelvin color temperature. They it's the same luminosity. It's just the yeah. amount of light you get out of a higher temperature bulb is a little bit more than the the warmer yellower light that we tend yeah. to use in our houses. It's so it's one foot candle difference. That is totally not something you can see. All right. I mean, am I wrong? That's how I read the this those drawings. Right, but if we have standards for a certain amount of foot candles, but they can just use the dimmer. But again, the dimmer, I think, and I never knew you could use a dimmer on such high output lamp posts across that much of a range. And again, if we give them the dimmer option, um, who knows if they'll manipulate that as time goes on even higher i don't i think what we're saying here is with the 3000 color they won't be able to bend beyond they won't be able to raise that dimmer to move it beyond the specified luminosity from the 3000. can, can i can i ask like i mean i i 100 agree because waste you know taking something out and wasting it i mean it, it's obnoxious they did this is like I'm, I, I'm thinking about like a, a you know like a, uh, an apartment building where you know we provide the heat and you know the thermostats are under a box with a key, so you can't mess with them. I mean, can we just have them do it? And there's an there's a its own there's a different on off switch separate from the dimmer, and they just set it where it should be and and put a box over it and call it a day. So I just want to say that you could, so there has been a lot of discussion and particularly from other experts in the field about the color temperature and the impacts to uh, wildlife, to the community, to dark sky and so dropping down below 3000 has been sort of the recommended position it's not in the zoning yet but it's in the draft because we've had this discussion so now you guys have been in the position of requiring that as a permit condition so that's a separate conversation from dimming the lights because it'll still be a bluer or cooler light than um, what was permitted so I just want to make sure you're clear about that, um, those distinctions. So then maybe when we have the discussion about lighting down the road, there should be a little discussion around the ability to dim light. And dimming is always seen in a, kind of a lowering kind of phase, but of course you can dim upwards also. Um, so. I mean, you they do have dimmers that you know, when you program the dimmers, you can program the ceiling and floor of how much it dims. I mean, I don't know what, yeah. they, they didn't give us their submittal or shop drawings for their, their control system. So we have no way of knowing. I mean, it just seems, I don't know. To me, it's just, the color well, temperature, as you said, is not in the zoning. It happened to be what they submitted, but we don't have an ordinance on, on color temperature. Caroline, I hear what you're saying about, like there's science about warm versus cool light, but that is th those studies do not address 3000 versus 4000. They look at like 2700 to 5000. You cannot tell the difference, honestly, unless you have them next to each other of 3000 versus 4000. They're both on the warmish side. Uh, I just, and, and again, they're surrounded by headlights that are at 4000, 5000 that are much cooler. Like there's gonna be semi trucks with like huge halogen bulbs. Like, I, mean, I don't know. It's Again, like whose life are we improving with this? I think it's not really about the lights. It sounds like if we want to stick to previous conversations that you've had on the board or if you want to change what you previously said. Like if there's not a big visual difference in the light, I don't think we need to argue about it. <laughs> But again, if our previous applicant came in and said, whoops, I made a mistake. And, and it was a pretty a pretty big mistake. We, you know, it wasn't you, it wasn't life altering, but whoops. And Big Y is basically saying the same thing. Whoops, pardon me, grant me uh, 
absolution after the fact, but um, we bought the wrong bulb. Can you help us out here? Um, and, and I think if we specify something in our plans and we sign off on them and their engineers sign off on them, then they, they should say to that. But there's a lot of things. If it happens to say that a sign is red on our plans and we approve them and then the sign is orange, we don't say, hey, you said it was red, go change it. Well, that's a big I, difference I, from uh, your setback is 25 feet and your setback is 30 feet if you're in the butter. Um, you know, and, and, I, and right, I'm but trying to compare. We're approving the, the parts of it that are in the ordinance that, like, the planning, the zoning ordinance regulates. We're not, uh, I don't think just because something's on the plans, like, there's lots of things that are on the plans that we review that don't get built that way. I just, so I don't David, I guess what I'm asking. I know there's a big discussion about the foot candles for the plan. I don't remember if color temperature was discussed or not. So are we holding them to, it was just what was specified at the time. Did we have a big discussion about color temperature for this plan? I don't recall it. I, um, I can tell you that every time an applicant comes in from the staff level, we tell them that the board has consistently approved 3000 K because of the warmer light is meets, um, you know, goals that are not uh, in, in terms of, being friendlier to and less impact on um, the night sky. And so it's not been codified, but because you have the ability to impose conditions, that's how the board has um, um, required these. And so we tell applicants up front that that's the standard. So that's why they presented a 3000 K. They had no problem with doing it because of what we asked them to do. It wasn't a condition we imposed, though. We didn't say the light shall be 3000K. It was just what was on the plan. Correct. But if they install the 4000K lights and they go around with a light meter and have an engineer reevaluate the lights, they're going to be above what we um, discussed earlier in their first application, correct? Right. There, so there's, it, there's some risk that they could swap it out for the other temperature lights and it would still be one foot candle above what we said, honestly. Like, I mean, I don't think there's any way of saying just because that's what we spec that that's what it ends up. That, that, that was a computer model that we approved. I'm, I'm I, amazed I, it was that accurate, to be honest with you. That's pretty <laughs> good. The condition of the permit was really just that they had to submit it as a lighting as built showing that they had said what they were going to install on the plan. So. I, I think, I mean, I, I, I guess I've changed what I initially, what I initially said. It just seemed like, I, I guess it seems to me like we should say yes with the condition that they put in a, a a, a, a dimmer that has limits. And if that's too difficult, then they can come back and ask us. Yeah, I mean, I think intent matters a lot. I mean, I think we're all having a little bit like they asked for this and then we talked about it or they asked for, you know, and, um, and, and, but I, you know, I, I, I think absent, you know, absent some, real evidence that there's a, that this is a, an, an attempt to get one over on us or you know to to kind of yeah. go around the thing that we talked about and if there is a solution if the dimmer is a solution um and that is more efficient uh, that i i i think i would say let's let's just do this and move on yeah i mean i think if they were trying to get one over us they didn't get away they got off with one fifth of a foot candle right I mean, <laughs> right like the average in an office is like 30 to 50 foot candles there's a huge range you cannot see a difference in one foot candle i'm struck by carolyn's comment <clears throat> that on a number of the informal discussions with uh, applicants before they come to the planning board they pretty rigorously talk about 3,000 foot candles and not 4,000, I mean, not for channels, but 3,000 of the bulbs, not 4,000. So if they've been trying to give that consistent message, 
And now all of a sudden we start leaking into, well, okay, it's all right, it's a big Y to use 4,000, they use it. You can go ahead and use 4,000. No, but we won't I, approve I, that on plans. I mean, I mean, this is still something, I mean, I think your analogy to the person before, to the applicant before is, or your comparison is, is apt here. I mean, I, 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 like I said, I, I am not seeing a willful, like, attempted something. And I think we're all feeling away. I feel like I'm feeling a little like my, like my dad, when I, you know, like he used to be like, I set a rule and, you know, and, and we, we discussed this and the answer is still no. And, and I, I hear you. I mean, I, I don't love that they have put us in this position, but I just did that. To my kid. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I, I don't think that, like, again, like the zoning does not say 3,000. Carolyn's saying 3,000. I don't think, like, you could have scientists say red houses are nicer to look at than black houses. And so we'll only approve houses that aren't black. I mean, I don't, I just don't think that is how we're making the law. I think this is a gas station. They want to make it a certain, they're, they're, they're still in the same range of warmth that we're asking for. It's not like bright blue lights. For many, many years, all parking lots had like, bright yellow silver halide lights and you had no color uh, rendering. This is an 80 color rendering uh, bulb. It's like quite good light. It's in the warm range. I, I think we're, and I, I don't agree with what you said, Marissa. I think we would, I wouldn't just like say, oh, you can't have a 4,000 or 5,000 temperature. Light oh, no, in I don't your mean situation. that. I mean, it's I'm not saying like a, a discussion. Of, I'm saying that we had a discussion. We made a determination and now we're having a feeling of like, about the about the coming back after the mistake. That's all I'm saying. I, I am not making any comment about what we would. I will say that it, it is coming. It is coming that the statute is going to prescribe these things. And uh, uh, I, I think that's coming down the road. There are people work arguing really hard for it. So, um, but that's not really what's before us today. And I, I'm inclined, David, uh, you know, to your point, it, it seems remarkably uh, similar and that there is an additional control that we could ask them to put on it to further, you know, contain what the issue we see here and far more efficient than asking them to replace everything. Hey, any last comments before somebody makes the motion? Carolyn, can I ask a procedural question? I missed the second part of the big Y hearing when, which I, I, I think I'm getting this right, that it happened in two parts and I was there for the first part of the discussion and I missed the second hearing. So I was not privy to that second set of conversations nor the vote. Um, am I okay to vote on this or should I abstain? No, you're okay to vote on this because this is a separate question. Will you okay. accept a modification to that plan that the board approved? Okay, thanks, just making sure. And it's not a public hearing, so it's really just whether this is whether to approve an administrative change based on the as built that came forward. So we just need to vote. Uh, I would move that we uh, approve the amendments um, to the original Big Y um, uh, permit to um, allow the lighting as built, as opposed to what was in the. Uh, original plan. Is that with the dimmer or no? With a, yeah, I would, I would say they with the dimmer. Second. New discussion. That was the dimmer language in their request, Carolyn? I mean, they have the dimmer; it's currently in place, right? So right, they just like, verbally told me that they do have the lights on a dimmer so they could adjust it with the dimmer to bring the foot candles down. We asked them to have someone with a little paddle. So if someone reaches for the dimmer, they we slap their hands. 100%. <laughs> I actually just looked back at their, their application shows 17 foot candles on the original application in places. So whatever, I agree with that. I, I vote yes. As, long, as soon as we vote, I'll vote yes. <laughs> so, okay. The, uh... Motion's been made and seconded. Any other discussion? 
All right, we'll go to the voice, voice, voice vote then. Let's start with Sam. Yes. Sienna. Yes. Krista. Yes. David. Yes. Chris. Yes. Marissa. Yes. Bryn. Yes. And Melissa. Yes. And George. So I'm going to be the odd man out and vote against this uh, modification. I think we so contrary. Yeah, once in a while, I think one of us, we have so many unanimous votes, but I, I really think we should uh, stick to it. So that being said, the uh, modification passes uh, by an eight to one motion, eight to one vote. Okay, so where does that leave us? Just with minutes? Uh, oh, wait, Beaverbrook. Before, before we go there, Sam, back to your original question. About 15 years ago, uh, the planning board went on a little site visit at night. The building inspector lent us a light meter, and I, I'm sure they're much more sophisticated now. And we went to a few different locations on King Street, and then we could see kind of what the light meter read, 15, 16 foot candles yeah. at one spot and at another. And then we could do a little comparing and contrasting. I think we went to three different sites. Um, that that might be an opportunity for us too, um, just to see a low level a low level um, site and more of a high level high traffic site. Um, it might give us some kind of grounding for those um, pieces of discussion. I also want to just point out that LEDs naturally dim over time. Like they don't let the they're when they're first installed. Like the a lighting engine a lighting designer does not engineer to the lighting as it's the day it's installed. They engineer to like a year or two out because they all do over time. And if there's a rating, I don't know what this one has, but like there's a rating that like over 10 years, it's at 70, it's a, it's a lot of dimming, like the maximum brightness. So it's like 70% after a few years, uh, oh. seven years. That'll come up when we're paying for new uh, streetlights uh, in the city in a few years, so. <laughs> right. Um, so the other item is um, a well, the applicant hasn't yet requested it, but um, the Beaverbrook Estates in Leeds, which is up at Chesterfield Avenue, Chestnut Avenue, sorry, um, is finally coming to a close. Uh, we, the city had held back um, $40,000 escrow to complete the project. The last little bit that had to be done was submission of as built for stormwater. Um, and you may remember about a year ago, um, the board voted to allow the expenditure of that money for the city to expend the money to do the as built because the applicant was not doing that. Um, and council also approved the expenditure of the funds but uh, the city has not expended the funds because the applicant stepped up and has proceeded to finalize this project. So as a result, we've just gotten sign off from DPW that the stormwater system is complete. And so um, I need a motion for or a vote for the board to allow the release of the $40,000 in that scrub for this project. Carolyn, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, what's up with that loop road that goes from the cul-de-sac around? It's like totally washed out. Is that really what's approved? It's like a washed out gravel road. Well, it was a, a gravel road. It's a private, it's a gravel driveway. So it's a shared driveway to serve um, six lots um, and it's looped so that it can serve six lots instead of just three. Um, and so it's, uh, the owner's association has to maintain it. So it's been there for a long time. So it probably is ready for some maintenance. Okay. Thank you. So, yep. So it says here in the, in the letter that the, uh, DPW approved the request to amend the stormwater management permit to allow the loop road to be impervious. So it sounds like they will save that loop road. I understand that. Right? The gravel 
and trap rock a pervious surface surface? Right. So they wanted to, after it was installed, they wanted, they put some more impervious materials on and uh, gradually over time, but now they've shown through the stormwater calculations that in fact, they are making up for that um, change in pervious surface. So it may very well be that they can, they pave it and that would be fine. You know, just a quick comment. I think we're, we're pretty fortunate in the city that there's a development that kind of went a little bit awry early on and it's been a, a contentious for a while, but most of the vision, you know, are, are really are up to snuff in terms of maintaining their stormwater permits and getting all their engineers signed off. This is kind of unusual, which is not a good thing, but uh, certainly points to some of the better construction that happens in the city. Um, any discussion at all? So then is there uh, a recommendation to uh, approve the release of the $40,000? Or are we recommending, uh, recommending this for city council? No, this is your project. Your, so you vote to uh, allow the release and then um, it would just go to the um, treasurer's office. They're holding the funds. I move to release the $40,000 in escrow to the Beaver Book Brook trustees or whoever should have the $40,000 back. I second. Made a motion to made and seconded. Any discussion? Right. Hearing none, we'll go to a voice vote. Uh, Melissa. Ah, there we go. Yes. And Corinne. Yes. Marissa. Yes. yes. Was that me? Yes. Yep. And Deanna. Yes. Krista. Yes. And David. Yes. And Sam. Yes. And the chair votes yes also. Unanimous. Nobody here from the Beaver Brook. Uh, state to congratulate so hopefully they use that money wise so that's it except for the minutes so there's from september through november i move to approve the minutes september 23rd october 4th october 14th october 28th and november 18th is there a second i'll second that Thanks, Melissa. Any discussion? Nobody saw any typos. That's worth shouting out. Okay. Well then, let's vote to approve the minutes. Um, let's go. We'll start with Sam. Yes. And David. Yes. Good stuff. Yes. Jenna. Yes. Chris. Yes. Marissa. Yes. Lauren. Yes. Melissa? Yes. All right. And then the chair approves them off. You remain. So, our last item is to congratulate Marissa on what? Your 28 months on the planning board? Your 38 months? Any idea? I don't know. Time flies, right? <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I came on fall of 2019. Yeah, yeah, great, great. Well, I hope many of your meetings on the, the uh, council are as substantial as these. As efficient as this one, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wow, in, in 58 minutes, that's pretty good. We should do this more often. Sure, wait till I'm gone and then, and then, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah. I know you guys were trying to really stretch it out there for a while. <laughs> Would you make, like to make the last motion, Marissa? Uh, I'd move that we adjourn. Cool. Second. I second. All right. Unfortunately, we have to, uh, any discussion? 
I guess, Kelly, we're not looking at in-person meetings for quite a while at this point, right? What's I mean, you could. COVID? You could. Um, yeah, you can do you can do it however you want. There are a couple of committees that are meeting in person. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, council chambers is pretty, I mean, you can spread out council chambers um, or the hearing room. Council chambers, nobody's really using, so. <laughs> Isn't it a vaccination clinic? I mean, it is. I got a shot there. Could they stop that now? No, but they they come in for the day I, and then I they. Have a, I have out. a screaming toddler. Okay. Can I go deal with that? Thank okay. <laughs> well, thanks. But then you, it's more work on you because you have to manipulate a, a virtual meeting at the same time. Well, no, you all could decide. The Central Business Architecture Committee allows Zoom viewing, but no participation. And that works well because that allows people obviously to listen in and see what's going on. Um, but if you really want to participate, you either write a letter um, or come to the meeting. I'm a big fan of written testimony. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Did we have Did we a motion already? on the table? Yes, <laughs> I think Sam voted. Sam voted. Yeah. 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 Yes. David. I abstain. Krista. Yes. Yes. And Marissa. Yes. Corinne. Yes. Melissa. Yes. Okay.